Hello crafters, this is Suzanne from A Creative Muse. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. Well, I had to play with this wonderful Concord and Ninth Weekender handbag die set. Oh yes, this one is cute. <laughs> so let's take a better look at this cute little project that makes for wonderful gifts, um, or just anything really candies, gift card wrapped up in tissue, favor box, anything. And now, now that I've actually put it together, I'm not disappointed at all. So let's get started. Alrighty. So I showed you in a recent haul, I had bought this set from scrapbook.com and I got a pretty good deal because I had an extra 10% off and used that to buy this die set. And it is just so cute. It's made by Concord and Ninth and designed by, because I kept her, I kept this here. This is from the packaging. It's a little sticker and it peeled off easily. Becky Roberts of Inking, Idaho. So I'll always have a copy of what the finished purse should look like. Even though I did go on YouTube and followed, she does have a video on Concord and Ninth. I followed her video for the first bag. And then it's like, once you make the first bag, it's like, well, I think I need to make another bag. I don't like my first bag. Let me make another bag and another bag. <laughs> and just keep going. And it does come together easily. Thank goodness. So this is the set. This is the base piece. And right after this video, I'm also going to do a separate video just for those who want to see a, a tutorial of the die set. Like I said, I followed how the person who designed it, plus I also watched another version and I kind of mixed both together to create the bags that I'm gonna show you. That I also showed you at the beginning of the video, but I'll show you, show you again in more detail. So you're gonna, this is the bag base. Let me, let me pull up my first bag. So this was the first bag that I made, which, you know, the first one is always like, you know, the tester. This was the tester bag. So you're gonna cut two of this base, which is the front, the back, and then that's the side. To add this piece, which I think also kinda of reinforces the bag, you don't have to curve it out, but it does add a little detail. That's two of this here, that piece. This is right here. And what I found is you can either, you know, of course you can cut the, the bag in cardstock, you know what let me maybe I should save this for the next video let me save let me save all of what I'm going to say all the points I'm going to save for the tutorial because I'm going to go into more detail and really what I want to show you is just how cute the bag is all right so these are all the pieces for the bag looks like a lot comes together very easily this is the first bag that I made let's do a measurement on the bag from the widest point four and three quarter the height of the bag here, three and, three and a quarter, and then from the top, five and a half. So that's the measurement, five and a half with the strap. So it's a substantial bag. And I did make a closure using a three eighths of an inch Velcro here. You can use a magnet, but I think it's so dainty that I'm, I'm not even sure if you want to even use a magnet on this. And depending on, on how strong the magnet is, it may end up crimping this further. Because at the end of the day, it's still paper. And if you see this little charm, this charm does not come, does not come in this set. This, this charm, that's the charm for this set, which I used on the other bags. This charm actually comes from this one. I have their previous release the year before which is the Everyday Purse Builder. I have not even made this. I bought it. I'll be honest with you guys, I just didn't make it. I even looked at it to make it and I was like, this one, even though it's a smaller bag, it has more pieces and I just was like, I don't feel like, I just wanted to deal with the big one. <laughs> and uh, I'm so happy I did. The smaller one, the Everyday Purse, does have a, a piece here to do a, a tassel, which and looking at the person, looking at the person's video, Becky, who did the demo for Concord and Ninth, she said both bags interchange in terms of this closure can work here, this um, 
decorative detail, I should say. The tassel here can be used here. Of course, the charm, that's this. This piece which holds the charm is available on both bags. And there's so much wonderful stitching detail. Do you need this? No. I'm actually somebody who owns it and I haven't even used it. So you can look at the picture of it. I was thinking of cutting it out and I was like, no, I was just making more and more <laughs> of this one. <laughs> But there, but there are lots of um, pictures that you can see. It's, it is a little bit smaller. Give you an approximate width. Four and a quarter by three. This one is four and three quarters. It's just, it's just a little bit higher and, and, and wider. So this was the first bag I made, which is just so cute as a little tote, isn't it? And I was just getting a feel, feel for the bag. So that's that one. Then the second one I made was this one. And again, I don't know if you can see it here. All of that, that's wet glue. This little panel, this panel that's right here, I would do with the adhesive strips or score tape or your ATG gun just to put these little strips on. And that's these two pieces that come in the, in the die set. The handle, oh, the handle just goes on nicely. That's the back of the bag. That's the bottom of the bag. So, so cute. So with this one, I'm using, you know, foil as the accent. Before I was just using cardstock as the accent. So you can see the difference right here beside each other. So that's my first bag. That's my second bag. Um, hmm. No, no 110 pound. No, I didn't use 110 pound. Here now, I made, I used the charm. That charm that came with the bag. I was thinking about using the key, but I just, I just didn't. <laughs> I just, I really like the heart. I thought this was so cute. And does it move? Oh, the first one I made, I glued this one on here so, so it, it wouldn't move. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to get a feel, feel for how to put the whole thing together. So by the first time I made it, nice. As a matter of fact, there is a key behind the charm. So I put the, the key there with that little loopy piece. That's this little die that creates the loop. And there's also this die, which I never use. This is the sentiment strip. There's also a, co a coordinating stamp that goes with this uh, weekend bag. I didn't get it. So I'll show you a picture now. They do sell it on scrapbook.com, so you can get it. I just, I just thought, you know, I'm, I just looked at it. I just knew I wouldn't use it. I, I know me. I'm going to just do all pattern paper or, you know, cardstock, cardstock in different colors and foil. And funny, I didn't use that much glitter. That's as much glitter as I used here. <laughs> I thought I would have been using glitter everywhere, but I didn't. All right, so that's the first bag, second bag. Then my third bag was this one. So I decided to do like a kind of a seaside because it is the weekender bag. And this one is using, oh, white basil cardstock. But on the white basil here for the handle to get the, to be able to curve it because um, with, with 110, it gets very stiff, but I did reinforce the sides here and here. Yeah. With 110 and it, bag stands up. That's the one thing that's nice about the bag. It stands up very well. So if you had a party, you just, you know, stack them all up. Nothing is falling over. Really, really nice. Bag number three. Here I use a more silver, silver foil and played with all the foil here. Again, all of them will have the same Velcro closure. which makes it easy to get in, get out, and really doesn't put too much stress on the paper. Yeah, this is a 3 8 inch. I bought mine from Amazon. I will put a link below to find it on Amazon. Not 100% sure. I know they do sell Velcro at Hobby Lobby and Michaels, but I'm not sure about the sizing, if they carry this small size. It was economical, and it was, it was like $3 on Amazon. So it wasn't too bad. But that's cute, right? 
So that's the seaside. And then my last one, which I love the most. <laughs> I love this one. I had this whole vision in my head of the black, white, and yellow, and the next thing I'm putting on blue foil to make it look like blue patent leather. You know, like how they have those bags with the nice designer bags with the patent leather on it? Cute. I think with the blue, it looks, it looks really nice. This one, this is a matte foil, so that looks different. It's nice, but not as nice. I like this one. And I did pop a little gold in here, gold foiling. Just those are the added details for the, for the hardware of the bag. And then I did the pop of yellow. So you're only limited, by, <laughs> limited in the color choices by your imagination. The papers I used, this one is Fashionista. As a matter of fact, I think that's what this one is. Fashionista, Fashionista by Echo Park. This one is Michaels. This one is Prima the pattern paper. Now, with the Prima pattern paper, I didn't get cracking. This one, I these, the, the Echo Park, when I started, you know, folding on the score, I was getting cracking, so I'll be honest with you. The, the printed, printed paper may crack, but it comes together so well that the cracking really doesn't affect how the bag comes together or how the bag stays together, if you know what I mean. It's not going to crack and things are going to be falling out all, all over the place. So where, where I had issues of cracking was right in here. And that's reinforced with this piece anyway. So, okay, the pattern paper cracked, but it's not bad. Cute, 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 cute. So... This is the Weekender bag. Now, if you're interested in this type of foil, because I decided, you know, most of the time I use my silver, gold, or the Anna Griffin. I do have basil foil as well. It's just that I'm very picky choosy about my basil foil. I usually save that for mini albums because it is 12, 12 by 12 and it's $2 a sheet. So, <laughs> but for these projects, I'm only, I'm only cutting out like for this. I only cut out, oops, here we go, a strip. When you're working with foil, don't tear out the whole sheet. Only use, only cut what you're gonna use, save the rest. Once you run this open part through the die cut machine, you're, you're gonna ruin it. It's gonna get um, kind of wrinkled and impressions and unless you wanna have a weathered looking foil, but I don't. But this blue, this beautiful blue comes from this die cuts with a view cardstock stack, which I've had Okay, remember I told you that I look at dates? You may not be able to find this. That's 2013. But you can find navy, navy blue foil because I do have some navy blue from Crafter's Companion. I just grabbed my little, I tell you, I keep these little six by six on my Anna Griffin. She's only about five by seven. I have a whole pack of foil. I love my little accents of foil. And I'm just so loving it here. It looks like patent leather. Look at that. It's gorgeous. But I just wanted to show you this. Maybe you have it, have it in your stash. Or maybe Die Cuts with a View still carries it. I know I got this at Joann's. And Joann's always has same Die Cuts with a View, same 6x6 in their paper crafting section. So maybe they'll have the same pack redone with the blue in it or any, or any of these wonderful colors. So it's like a navy blue, a green... Copper, gold. See, I have a million of, of gold. Um, this turquoise blue, that's cute. And then this brush silver. So this is not like a, okay. I'm funny about, you guys, you guys must be like, yes, Suzanne, we know you're funny, but this is matte foil. This is brushed foil, right? This is, shiny foil. So there's all different kinds of foil. And I like to have all of them because I like to play around. This is also a matte, matte foil, gold foil. So this is a die worth getting. Find some cute pattern paper. Don't worry about if it cracks because it's going to hold together. And in this case, foil works perfect for this project. I think it just adds that accent. 
And you can see the difference right here. When you use cardstock, it's cute, but it's much cuter here. <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed my video. And right after this will, will be the tutorial on how to put together this cutie patootie. Alrighty, on to the next video. Stay crafty, my friends. Bye.